So what do you think? Any thoughts? Interesting. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's one of the things that is, is fascinating. I, I like uh, showing this too. A couple of things that in the last class we were talking about was <clears throat> really how much of your identity is based upon the things that you're addicted to. What are you guys addicted to? Addicted to any emotion? You ever thought about that? You know people who are addicted to drama? Those negative people that no matter what happens, they're going to create drama just for drama's sake. Okay. These are the ones that are going here and they'll kind of you know, you know, push buttons and stuff like that and sit back and watch you guys go at it. You know people like that? Okay. That's an addiction. You have these addictions that where the brain and the neurological you know, the, you know, information going back and forth, that's what ends up happening a lot of times. And we don't realize that we're addicted to these things. What do you guys think about the, the lady when she was yelling at herself in the mirror? I had this one student one time, a couple years back, when, I, when she saw this, she, she stepped out. And I'm like, okay. So I went and talked to her afterwards, and she said she had just been doing that to herself in the mirror in the dorms. You go, really? It really hit her big time. And, and really think about what your identity is based upon. I mean, do, what do you tell yourself in the mornings? Have you ever done that before? You know people who have done that? I think women have a tendency to do that more to themselves. What do you guys think? I don't break a mirror, you know, smash the toothpaste thing, but I mean, I definitely look in the mirror and see things I don't like. Right. Have you ever yelled at yourself? Well, think about it. I mean, she just partied and stuff like that, and she's yeah. regretting what, you know, what happened, and things she doesn't remember, but they're in pictures, right? We have a Why do we do that, though? What's the point of doing, you know, why, why beat yourself up over something like that? I think it has to do with our self-image of how we feel we're perceived by others, and, like, when we get to that vulnerable state, like, for instance, with her being intoxicated and not knowing what she did, it just makes you feel, I guess, you know, you feel bad about yourself. It hurts your, your self-esteem. And then you think about what other people possibly might say about you. Yeah. You hit it right on the head. Exactly. A lot of times we end up giving other people power over us because mm -hmm. we start thinking, even like our parents, oh, my parents, even if they're dead and gone. <laughs> oh, well, what's my mom going to think about this? Right? Kind of thing? You're right. You're right on the button there. The thing about it is, is that your identity isn't based upon what other people think about you. I remember this one friend of mine <clears throat> when I was in Taekwondo, and he would give me a hard time. And I go, I'm sure glad my identity isn't based upon what you think about me. It really isn't. Okay? Because if it is, then you give them power over you. But that's the way we're socialized. Okay, so when you're socialized that way, what ends up happening biologically, you get into that mindset of thinking, oh, I've got to do the right thing, I've got to do the right thing. When somebody says, I've got to do the right thing, I always ask them, according to whom? If you say that to yourself, I've got to do the right thing, according to whom? What would be the right thing for you? Well, I don't know. Have you ever had that where it's like, I've got to do the right thing? Yeah. Like what, for example? I don't know, it's like you're with friends and there's a choice or something. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a bad choice and a good choice. Like, well, I gotta do the right thing. It okay. could be anything, really. I mean. okay, how about this? How about this? this may be cultural, too. Um, a friend of mine, um, thank you notes. Yeah. How many of you were raised with having to send thank you notes? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. If you were raised with it, really? Mm -hmm. You had to send thank you notes for. For like birthdays and stuff like that? What would happen if you didn't? Never found out. Oh, oh really? So you just, uh, really? Well, yeah, up until this year for Christmas, I even got a pack. Ah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So how do you feel about it? Yeah. Guilty when I look at the pack of cards, but... <laughs> Because they're friendly, I gotta send, I gotta send thank you notes, I gotta send thank you notes. Why? According to whom? I don't know, maybe like I said, maybe it's me. Latinos, if I had maybe a hundred thank you, we're fine. Yeah. 
Am I right? Yeah, that's nice. okay, we're good. Thank you. Appreciate it. There's your thank you note. <laughs> Write it down someplace so you have it for me later. But you have this mentality that if I don't, then I'm going to get in trouble with it, right? Like you were saying. You tie it into it. So it's amazing how that works. So really, take a look at the, you know, the condition of addiction that the lady said. What are you addicted to? What do you keep repeating over and over again? What are the emotions that keep coming up over and over again? What are the thoughts that keep going through your mind? Remember I said that the thoughts are the beginning of all creation. Everything here was created by a thought. Everything you feel is created by a thought. But I told you that my mom, with the, with the uh, going through the dementia, when they think of something with delusions, you can't talk them out of it. She saw me as a little boy, and I'm standing right there next to her, and she still sees me as a little boy playing out there. That's in her head. Okay? So, what's really real? Like they're saying in here, the brain doesn't know the difference. How many of you like roller coasters? Do you really? Okay. The, what's the scariest roller coaster you've ever been on? What's the scariest one you've ever been on? No idea. No idea? I honestly was never nervous. Oh, really? Even getting ready to get onto it, you weren't well, nervous or anything? I was anxious to get on it. You're anxious to get on it? So, like, excited to get on it? Okay. Who was scared shitless, basically? <laughs> Were you really? Which one? It was at Six Flags in California, the Goliath one. It just opened. They have like this like crazy insane drop. Is that the one that kind of spins? No, see, I like the like the old school roller coasters where you just go up and then you drop. Like those right. scare me. Like right. I can handle all the upside down strapped in stuff. But really? This is just like the bar, and then you like fall. You know, and it's like that was like scary. Really? So when you're getting up and you're in line, you're like looking at everybody, ah, screaming, right? And yeah. Last number, where do you? Know? How's your body feeling? How are you? Nervous. Nervous, like stomach tight, tense, 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 heart racing, and then closer you got onto it, your heart started racing even more so. I'm not sitting in the front, I'm not sitting in the front. <laughs> <laughs> have, how many of you have ever gone to an interview and or something sits, getting in front of something in front of, uh, of this is what the biggest fear that people have is getting in front and talking in front of people. Anybody have a problem? Yeah. Okay, good. You're going to get to try some of the yeah, I do semester. it in English. She makes me do it all the time, too. Exactly. Like, uh, now, understand something. Like <laughs> understand something. The body, the brain, or, or the mind, the body doesn't know the difference between excitement or fear. The same physiological reaction. You're like nervous, the body, you know, the muscles, the stomach's tightening. doesn't know the difference. The difference is what you call it, what you label it. You're excited about it, right? Okay. Have you ever gone on uh, the, uh, the roller coaster up in Vegas on top of the stratosphere? I, I, I've seen, I, I get nervous. That's I have heights, nice. I don't like roller coaster at home. You would ever get on No, there? I don't like heights either. Really? So would you get on there though? No. No? At all? Would you get on there? Uh, yeah, just for the Because I think it goes off the edge, doesn't it? Yeah, and then yeah, it's like so off the edge so doing the thing. <laughs> yeah, I've seen videos of it, it's too much. <laughs> Seriously? And, and I've seen like uh, some motivational um, uh, videos on, on YouTube, and there's this one girl that's on mountain climber, and they're up there, and you know how they have the the, the camera and everything. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> My heart starts racing and stuff like that too. But again, the body doesn't know the difference between the two. So if you get excited and you're going to come up here and give your speech or anything like that, tell yourself, I'm excited about this. This is going to be good, even though your stomach is like, oh, hell, I'm afraid. <laughs> How can you be afraid of heights and not afraid of roller coasters? Um, I'm still working on that. Because well, I am too. Like, Are you really? I've just been on my classes or on the patterns and I was really young and terrified. But I was never terrified to be on a tall roller coaster. Well, okay, tall roller coaster, this is what I figured out. And things like that never bothered me. Really? It never bothered you? The thing I figured out for me is that the time that I get, maybe it's part of the vertical, when you're, you're starting, you know, you're working your way up. You're going slow enough to figure out, oh, hell, I'm getting up high. And then you see something that's close enough to touch, and you get that kind of vertigo kind of feeling with it. But once you're, ah, you know, you don't have any time to, you know, to really motion. think of it. Yeah, the motion keeps moving. The one that's really cool that I like, though, is um, uh, Disneyland Adventure, the California Screaming, where they shoot you out. The Mickey Mouse head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're like the countdown, ding, 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 ding. That's fun, I like it. Yeah, that's fun. I would never, never, okay, uh, elevators, glass elevators, can you do those? You can't. 
Really? I can't. I can hear it. I think really? mm -hmm. pretty much what you just said that the secure climb of stairs is so much more scary than you can kind of feel whether the you can kind of feel how high you're going up. The buildings aren't stationary completely all the time. They sweat. They sweat, yeah. Yep, yep. Well, have you ever done this? No, no, I, when I was younger, I would jump from one one uh, you know building to another, uh, the garage and stuff like that. And maybe because I fell at one time, you know, and it kind of brought me back to that. But I remember I was doing <clears throat> uh, some, um, putting some tar around the air conditioning on the, in, in their house, and it started kind of getting my heart started racing and stuff, and I was singing to myself, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, you know, just kind of <laughs> pretending in my head. You know, Spider-Man, because it, it's a tile roof. And it's kind of slanted enough. So I'm kind of like, okay. And my wife was like, okay, take it slow. So everything was fine as long as I kept moving. But, but anyway, so if you take a look at, <clears throat> again, what are you addicted to? That's what a lot of this. So the whole movie in itself, and the thing I want to talk about as far as sensation and perception is what exactly is real? A lot of the things that we focus on become real. Okay, what's at uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? The things you focus on will become your reality, right? You ever tell you that um, the story about the, the man with the blindfold coming in? There was a, <clears throat> a gentleman that was blindfolded. They brought him into a room, and they brought him up to the wall, and they put him up against the wall, and uh, they took the blindfold off, and there was a painting on the wall, and they asked him, "What's the painting about?" So he, all he could see was a hoof. It's about a horse. So they moved him back, come to realize that it's a horse with a parade and balloons and clowns and colors and everything he didn't see. I always say that if you focus on one thing and one thing alone, that's depression. If you focus on that one dot, that's depression. You have to, in your life, step back. That's why they're talking becoming the observer of your own life. Come back and look at the whole tapestry. There's a lot of stuff here you don't see. How many of you like to paint? Okay, what, what have you painted? What kind of? Like flowers and like, like nature kind of stuff. Nature kind of stuff, okay. Oils, or the, what do you Acrylic. use? Acrylic. Acrylic, okay, things like that. Have you ever had a, where you made a mistake? Yeah. And what do you normally do? Cover it. Cover it up, okay. <laughs> have you ever had anybody come by and put a black no. handprint on there? No. What would happen if somebody did? Get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what would you do? Run after him? Right? <laughs> okay. This is what happens. In life, crap's going to happen. It's gonna, people are going to come along. They're going to try to push your buttons, right? And uh, what I like to say is look at it as you're a painter. You're going in, painting a little bit, come back out. Okay, I need to look over here. You come back out, right? So you, you step back from it. Somebody comes and gives that black mark. Guess what? Make it into a flower. You have a choice. You can either get totally pissed off and say you just ruined the whole painting. I would throw it away, but I'd be mad. <laughs> okay, so you'd be mad, but you would make something out of it, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's what you would want to do, even in life wise, if something happens. See, that's again focusing on the positive as opposed to the negative and becoming more addicted. It takes about 24 days, they say, I think. That would say about 24 days to change the habit if you repeat it over and over again. So, Something for you to think about. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Comments? Anything think of? Okay. One of the other things that I wanted to to tie this into was um, a sensation and reality. Okay. As I was saying, what is real? Okay. We get the information that comes into our minds. Right. This is all online. Uh, so if you want to check it out. But basically, what ends up happening is how, how do we know if something's real? What do you guys think? Well, because you can touch it. You can touch it. How else? What are the other ways that we sense the world? You can see it. See it. Touch it. See it. Smell it. Smell it. Okay. Hear it. Hear it. Taste it, okay? Right? Or do you guys believe in the sixth sense? I see dead people. No? no? You see that movie? The movie. Yeah. Okay? So we have five senses, sometimes six. Okay? And I want to kind of bring this into exactly what is real. Is it our senses? 
in psychology, you know, there are a lot of, I had a professor who said, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Therefore, the spiritual world doesn't exist. Okay? According to him. He ended up passing away of emphysema, and I was really curious to ask him what he thought closer to his death, whether that was true or not. The way I look at it is that, yeah, we can't measure it, we just don't have the right tools in order to measure it. Okay. But I'm going to show you something <clears throat> here, and tell me what you think. Has anybody ever experienced something out of the ordinary, like a ghost or orbs or anything like that? Okay. One time, I used to work at um, the John Deere demo site in King River, and me and my husband were driving like, during winter. Uh -huh. and, uh, do, you remember, do you know where the old arts and crafts building is? Yeah. Okay. Well, say It's shut down now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, west of there, the first um, field road, mm -hmm. we were driving right there, and there was like this big old thing. I have no clue to this day what it is, but what I saw with the bright thing <laughs> was it looked like a ginormous, it was looked like a shadow thing, but it looked like a big caterpillar, like it was like that big, really? and, it, and it moved like how a caterpillar moves in it, and we were like, it seemed like when it was going by, it was going slow, and we saw it go through the brush on the side, mm -hmm. and we went, and I tried to tell my husband, turn around so we can go see what it is, but he was just like, just leave it, it wasn't, you know, you're just meant to see it, you don't have to go and, you know, mess with it, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> and but, and, and in, in a male term, just said, I was scared. Yeah. That's what it really Yeah, means. but oh, it, was, it was really weird, I don't know what it, I don't want to say that it was like, you know, Supernatural or whatever was right. it just really weird? How big would you say that would? Um, was? I'd say it was like half. Like we had a little calendar, so like it looked like it was like maybe a quarter the size, mm -hmm. and it looked like it was at least that big. Really? Yeah, but it was like I don't. It looked like a mist, a black mist, but we could see the headlights and the lights from the houses through it. But you just could see it, and it looked crazy because it was like a caterpillar. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was weird. Wow. <laughs> You hadn't seen anything else other than that at that time? Or? No, that's the only thing I've ever seen that was really weird. Really? Yeah. Wow. Anybody else seen anything like that? Right. Let me tell you about this experience that I had uh, in Stanfield. Uh, my sister had um, this uh, friend who lived in Stanfield, and we went, and we're actually looking at some paintings that she had painted of Jesus and stuff. And we're in her mobile home. And uh, we came out after, <clears throat> after um, you know, visiting for a little bit. I was standing here, my sister was standing here, the fence was here, my friend was here, or, and, and she was facing us. The mobile home was behind, the door was open, and at the exact same time, my sister and I said, did you see that? I was like, yeah. Well, what I saw, I saw skin-colored, thick fingers opening up the curtain, and then you look, it closed it, I'm like, you see that inside? There's, we just barely come up. So we walk back in, and uh, and of course, you know, I'm like, curious. Now remember, I'm thinking scientifically, right? I'm talking, there's got to be a reason. Maybe somebody's you know playing around. So I go into the back room, and um, you know, I hear this. Yo, yo, yo. I'm not just kidding. And he goes, no. So I walk in. Nobody in there, right? And I come back out into the living room, and I get this chill. Step out, no chill. Step in, chill. What do you think? What's the first thing you think about? Air conditioning. Well, air conditioning, I thought. Paranormal, what do you think? I thought air conditioning. There's got to be a logical reason for this air conditioning vent. Look around, no air conditioning vent whatsoever at that point. Took me a while to kind of get that, that nervousness out. What do you guys think about that? My sister saw it. She said it was a claw. I saw just thick, fat fingers, you know. I've always found it strange how people relate the, uh, what they call those types of experiences to seeing things. Because if something was there, mm -hmm. why would it, why would we be able to see it? Like, I don't know how to explain it, right? If, going back to sensation, the material world. Wait, are you saying that there is, that we did see something, or we imagined? I mean, you lost I, me a little bit. I see more imagining. Our mind plays tricks on us because we can't access certain parts of reality. Okay, so we do look for, we do look for, for you know, things that, that our minds are comfortable with and understanding it, right? That's why we feel fear when we stumble across these things, because it's abnormal. It's not normal. 
Right. Because are you saying it's because it's based on a past experience? I'm saying that it's based on the world that we live in that we can't see. Okay. So that can't be met. So do you think that my sister and I were hallucinating it? Well, is hallucination real or not? Well, again, if you take a look at the way my mom was hallucinating. Then you know she had delusions, some hallucinations. It's within the brain. Okay, well let me show you this. And let me show you this, and you tell me what you think. Okay. As you know, my mom passed away in in August. Okay. And this, I, I just uploaded this um, to my website here. This is my sister here. Um, and um, this was the. Have you ever played that game before? You put a little, little whipped cream on there and it's you know, and you clip. Oh, yeah, yeah, get all excited because it didn't, didn't hit you. Okay. <clears throat> we were having fun. Again, first time my mom's not there with this. Um, and tell me what you think about this. I was filming it, and this is what happened. So I want to check it <laughs> okay, what was that? Did you see it? Yeah. Let me do it again. <laughs> okay, I call it my mom photobombing my sister. <laughs> Have you ever heard of orbs? Mm-hmm. You know, so some, some of the people say, well, orbs are, are those things that are dust and floating, the reflection of the light there. What do you think about that? Mm. But what would you think about? I mean, it's kind of film. Do the, the film itself, or not film? I'm like, I'm like, I might come on Was it a reflection? Or was it? What do you think? I mean, this is probably my favorite vlog. I always have trouble connecting. Yeah. I believe in energy. I believe in the spiritual world. I believe that there's things going on that we can't see. Right. Exactly. And it, yeah, and because of the of the of the, the, the direction and the, just the moving part of it, and so that's kind of wow. This is wild. I didn't see it till afterward, right? Now check out this one. Tell me what you think about this. Okay, this last one was of since when my mom was, um, you know, having the the delusions and. Um, and what ended up happening was um, she, with the dementia, she started wandering, looking for me as a little kid kind of thing, and we were going across the street, so we had to put a camera in there so we could see and make sure she's there okay, right? Now, this was um, actually done, um, when was it done? Uh, December of this past year. Every once in a while, I check on my dad, make sure he's okay, so we have a camera, night camera, in the, the living room. Area. Okay, so tell me what you think about this. Okay, that's her. That's my mom's chihuahua. Okay. When I saw this, I was like, "Damn." Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Let's see that again. Isn't that wild? That's not an orb. That's not dust. That's something. It's nighttime. It's, you know. Isn't that wild? What do you think? It almost could be like a reflection, like if a car goes by, like, you know, sometimes reflections come in, like, in cut, like, on the camera lens or something. Yeah, and, and that's what you would think, okay, because there's a, there's a window and there's a street that's right there, but that and was And it was closed. moving fast, like, is it, could be a car going by? But there's no light at all. No. Because everything, yeah, it, it's just a night, it's a night vision, you know, so, but it comes in, goes around, comes back. I mean, it has mm-hmm. movement that you, you can't, I like that's probably too long. 
Yeah, yeah it just kind of leaves them. There's another one that I put on there too. You guys can take a look at it. If you go to this, you'll see another one. Where earlier before she was there, and a whole bunch of were flying around. And, I, and I'm thinking, again, logically, you start to think, okay, is there dark bugs? There are, and there's an infestation in my, my dad's house, right? No. You know, this one was one of the like fascinating ones. It's like, wow. So. Yeah, you know, I thought about that. You know, and I'm like, you know, but it's it. You know, look at this again. You know, one more time. So she just stops. There's times that she's looking at the couch because my mom would sit on the couch there a lot. And boom. Flies in. Just fascinating. Kind of has a little bit of a tail following it. It kind of did, didn't it? Yeah, well, here's that. Let me just show you the other one um, in part two. This was the one that was, and she came out earlier. Do you see them some flying around, stuff like that? And I think, yeah, you know, are they bugs? Are they orbs? Are they, I mean, dust? Dust doesn't make. You don't see a whole bunch. And that was the same night. So there's times where there's a lot of activity, and there's times where there's not. And it's just fascinating. Because dogs and animals, they pick up on things that we don't. Have you ever seen that before, or heard that before? Mm-hmm. Where there's stuff that, that they can pick up on when we don't. Maybe our senses are not the same, you know, kind of thing. So, But anyway, so any other thoughts from there to think of? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk more about a couple of other experiences that I had, too. Um, you know, ask your, your friends, ask your parents if they've ever experienced anything like that. We'll talk more about that next week. So, sounds good? About the ghosts out there. All right. Talk to you guys later. Ciao.